Alright guys, today I've got a video for you here today. It's going to be on my um, HTC One M8, um, but it's not going to be specifically for this device. It's going to be an app review. And we're going to do an app review of this app right here, which is called Trickster Mods, um, which is really cool. This is a root application, so it does require root access. It is going to have a pop-up and um, ask you for you know, root access. So you're going to have to have super su or super user, some kind of root access application on your device to be able to run this. I guess I'll give you some other prerequisites for this thing. Uh, highly recommended to have some kind of recovery system already in your device and to just run an Android backup before you start using uh, Trickster Mod, okay? That reason being is because this can really edit a lot of deep, deep information and stuff that you want to be able to restore your device in case something you change in here messes it up where it won't function correctly for you. Um, so that being said, obviously really important to know how to do an Android backup, have a custom recovery, have root access, unlike bootloader, all that kind of good stuff that you guys have heard me talk about before. If you're lost right now with Jimmy just saying that, you need this app review probably isn't for you because it, you're going to need to know that kind of stuff first. I have tons of videos on all that kind of stuff on my YouTube page, all that stuff. So, you know, check that out if you want to learn how to do that on your device. All right. So let's actually get into the uh, application here. So this is how it opens up. And it tells you a lot of great information. Now, this is the donated version. I'm pretty sure the standard version is very, very similar um, than the, to the donated version. The donated version is like $3, or something like that. So you can see it tells me right there on top, it gives you, this is just information about your device. So this is an HTC One M8. It is Verizon, gives you the code name, which is really cool. Um, tells you what kernel you're on. Now if you have a custom kernel, you'll be able to do a lot more with this than stock kernel. Right now this is, um, is a custom kernel because it's a size in my kernel. Um, but you can even get other custom kernels that allow you to overclock your CPUs and things like that. And you can actually use that to this application to do that if you have that kind of custom kernel installed. Um, some of the other stuff that's really cool is you can just see some of your processes, uh, processor CPU information here. You can see what CPUs are online and running. So I've got two of them that are online right there and then two that are off. I do have four CPUs in here. Here's my GPU. You can see what it's running at right there. Your battery, temperature, and then your CPU temperature um, right there. So just a lot of good information about your device if you want to know it. It is right on the first screen. There's multiple ways to navigate this screen and this interface. Um, so I'll show you one. One of them is just going to be your swiping left and right. And you can see it said two of four. And then you can go back and you're back to info, one of four, two of four. The other way to navigate through the menus here is to just hit this. And here's your four screens. And again, you can go back to info. And you can go to general. And your four different screens that you guys can go through are all right there. You can also swipe over to get to that screen right there, as you can see. So we're going to swipe over to tools, and I'll kind of go through this. So this is ADB over Wi-Fi, which is really cool. If you have um, your Wi-Fi turned on, see, it won't let me do it because my Wi-Fi is not on right now. If you have your Wi-Fi turned on, you turn that on, and you can go ADB in your command prompt on your computer. Type in ADB uh, connect um, devices, I think, and it'll pull this device up, and you can do ADB commands over your Wi-Fi to this device. So, really cool feature, I like it, I like it a lot, it's in there. Um, keep screen active while it's doing it, that's there. Um, device hosting, some information you can do there. Here you can scan for media on your SD cards, right there very easily. And then, system control editor, this is like really in depth. I would highly recommend not using this feature unless you really know what you're doing, unless you develop for kernels and you really understand what it's doing here. Because you can edit an insane amount of fields in here and this can really change the way your device functions and battery performance and all that kind of stuff. But unless you're like really educated in it, and I'm not, so I won't even use it. But it is there if you know how to use that stuff. Um, right here you have some a little configuration stuff. Here, min free. This right here is really nice. Basically what this does is based on your memory and how much you have, it sets minimums so that it always keeps your device running with extra memory like saved up. So or in, available, I guess maybe is a better way of saying it. So you can adjust these for these different different uh, profiles here 
and change them up so that your device has more memory sitting in, in reserve for when it needs it or less or however you want to do it and these things are these numbers are in megabytes so it's keeping 60 megabytes uh, as your minimum numbers for these different areas um, so it's pretty nice nice you control it here's read ahead um, this one was actually at 512 I changed mine to one gig I've seen it up to two gig for different people say they like that too um, so this is this is also in megabytes so it'd be um, I think it's in megabytes anyway let's actually see that uh, shoot I'm not sure if it's megabytes or not but I've seen this up to like would be like 2000 or 1000 is normally a good setting mine was at default uh, from factory was 512 uh, here you got IO schedulers and you can change these what I would recommend doing is applying a different one on these and then seeing how you like it so I really know that this uh, CFQ is I, I've always liked that scheduler on me another thing that's really good if you want more information on schedulers is just Google the names of these schedulers and it'll explain more of what the scheduler actually does and how it how it controls your device and helps your performance and things like that um, there are advanced controls right here and again you get into these IO scheduler stuffs and these parameters unless you know what you're doing I really would not mess with it um, and then, or maybe Google what each of these do online and then you know, if you want to tweak them from there you can and that's the importance of having that Nandroid backup because if you do mess something up you can always restore that and you'll be back in business um, here we go so this this would be your frequency which is pretty cool so you got your min and your max if you if you want to turn these on and right now I just have my my min and max are actually both maxed out for this so that'd be basically 2.26 um, gigahertz processor so and you can adjust these and profile and lock them in all that kind of stuff right through here if you want to adjust your CPU frequency for you know underclocking overclocking all that kind of good stuff it's all done right there so here you got governors um, and governors are really cool basically I'll try to explain what you got here you have this this controls how your CPU ramps its frequencies up and down it's probably the best way I can explain it to you so um, if you go to power save mode, it's going to not ramp very much. It's going to try to maintain low CPU frequencies for battery life and, and, and to save power. Okay, If you go to like performance, it's going to ramp up almost instantly to the max CPU you have set. And, and it's going to just, your device is going to fly, but you're going to drain your battery faster. Okay, If you go to like on demand, it's going to base whatever your load is on your device and ramp accordingly. So this is pretty good. I like that. Interactive is the same kind of thing. Um, conservative, again, would be more like this power saver um, kind of mode. And then user space has to do with, you know, your launcher more than anything else is, is what, what you're doing right in your apps right now. It kind of runs based on that information. Um, but again, it's, it's all about ramping your CPU and how quickly it does it and how it does it. And that's the point of the governor. So I actually had my power save. I think I'm actually going to put it back onto on demand. Um, that's a pretty good one if you like that mid range stuff. But if you want to save battery life, to put it on power save. If you don't care about battery life, you'll just keep charging it, put it on performance. This thing will fly. That's what you can do with that. Again, there's some governor controls here. Mine, it doesn't function on this kernel for me, but if you had a different kernel, I'm sure you could actually get in and use that. Um, so that's general. And then let's see what else we have through here. So this is this is specific, some little information. It talks about most of these talk about in the section what they do, which is really nice. This is multi-core power saving. So you can have this thing change this from zero to like one or two. See, so actually I can read it to you. It says try to group tasks into le less or least core as possible. Zero for disable or two for the most aggressive. So it's trying to take the task and put them into one core. Um, for power saving so it's not using multiple cores to do multiple tasks it's bringing it down um, so it's it's there if you want to check it out um, temperature throttling what that does is when you set it if your device gets over a certain temperature it brings the CPU down so that you're losing less power so it'll cool down the CPU um, very nice also here's your GPU uh, max frequency and it is set to the max right there but you can mess with it and what that works with, with is with games and how your graphics look so on 2d 3d games the higher you go obviously the better performance you're gonna get on your GPU uh, lastly we have um, LED controls and you can come in here and adjust how your LEDs work on the top 
and uh, very very cool. Definitely some neat stuff. All right, so we've saw those these all these settings over here, those menu settings. If we swipe over here, there are some more, and this is where you can actually turn your different things on at boot. So you adjusted them in here, but if you reboot your device, they go away unless you click you know kernel settings to apply them at boot. But one thing that's important, in case you apply the wrong kernel settings and your device panics when you reboot it, and then you're stuck, you're like, ah, it's, it, it keeps rebooting and now i got to redo, redo my Android backup. What you can do is you can set duration. So what this does is this waits five minutes after boot to apply your new uh, settings. So that way if you reboot and it does a panic after five minutes, you had that first five minutes to come in back in here and readjust your settings so that because it'll run on just normal stock settings for five minutes and then it'll apply your 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 tweaks so that's really important to definitely have that and adjust it and understand how that functions also you have just information would be celsius or fahrenheit right there you can change your icon pick one like this how you want it to look on your desktop or your launcher i should say and then um system language is right there and then themes uh, I actually have this one set right here. It comes standard, I think, on light, but I don't like it. But you can also just do dark. So you can see you can actually just change the uh, theme around how it looks. That's always cool. Always cool. All right. Um, I think that's pretty much most of this application. Uh, there is a lot you can do with it and probably a lot of things that I even skipped over. But um, just to give you a pretty good overview of how this functions. So I hope you guys like this little video here on Trickster Mod. Big props to the developer. If you like his work, definitely go get the paid version or the donate version, however you want to call it, and uh, support this guy so he can keep bringing some cool, uh, cool mods and tricks to our devices, our Android devices out there. So, all right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out.